Hi, my name's Leon Rowe, currency trader and trading coach at trading180.com and welcome to this week's supply and demand for us in gold fundamental and technical analysis. Hope you're all doing well and had a great week trading. Um, I just wanted to say that I will be releasing the uh, recorded um, webinar I had on the 3rd of November talking about forecasting Forex trends that last for months, but there is a condition to it. I wasn't really going to release this until next year at some point, but um, I thought that um, because there, I'd been getting a lot of um, emails basically asking me to release it, um, I thought, all right, then, well, you have to do something for it, right? So um, for the you know for the regular viewers and the new viewers, uh, I will be releasing uh, the forecasting Forex trends that last for months um, webinar uh, using fundamental analysis that I recorded on the 3rd of November. But I definitely have to have at least 25% of YouTube likes in comparison to the view. So at least just a quarter of you, one in four people have got to like this video. And also I've got to have a thousand views as well. Very, very small, you know, a small channel. Not asking for much, right? You can share with your um, other trading colleagues, watch it a few times. I don't know if you're going to get multiple likes, if you've got multiple channels, but um, yeah, I'll start, I'll release it when I get um, at least a thousand views and at least 25% of you um, like the uh the channel and so um once i get that then i'll re release it and by the way um you know it's uh, this is this is really breaking down this is kind of like a cheat code as i call it and really breaking down the fundamentals in the most simple way um to um predict and forecast i guess the um you know trends that will last for months and, and even years many of you know that i've been you know for example short on the euro dollar for you know nearly 80 months and i continue to go short on the uh, euro dollar over 80 months nearly two years now right and that's just through fundamental analysis so um yeah, if you like, guys can complete this challenge, then I will release the views and basically show you the things that I've been uh, looking at and doing and uh, give you an example on the euro dollar, you know, the trend this year and uh, the guys in the Discord group, you know, have been uh, taking advantage of that as well as the dollar yen as well. And talking about the Discord group, um, if you guys want to join a mentorship, just um, last chance this year will open on Monday the 28th of November and closes Friday the 2nd of December and it's the final opening of 2022. I do like to keep uh, my classes um, on the smaller side of an open often. Um, mentoring takes a lot. By the way, if you do want to join, be prepared to work You know, hard. This isn't something that you can learn in like you know a couple of days. There is a lot to it. Um, and uh, yeah, so the next enrollment after this is going to be in January, um, you know, early February. I haven't decided yet, 2023. So um, go to trading180.com uh, on those dates and uh, become a, um, well, basically enroll if you want to enroll. If you don't, I wish you all the best, of course. So getting into this week's uh, fundamental analysis in the week ahead on tradingeconomics.com. Uh in the US, the most important economic releases include retail sales, producer prices, and housing data. So investors will be keeping an eye on the earnings report, of course. And uh, yeah, I was reading up about the uh, um, FTX exchange, file for bankruptcy, um, crazy. Um, although I do buy crypto, I don't definitely don't keep my uh, my money on uh, exchanges, as they say, not your keys, not your crypto, right? Um, Elsewhere in the spotlight will be inflation rates from Japan, UK and Canada, autumn budget statement from the UK as well. That's going to be very important because uh, it, it really sets the tone for the UK as uh, we'll get into. Uh, also, it will be interesting to follow the ZEW economic sentiment for Germany, third quarter GDP growth rates from Japan, of course, and industrial production, retail sales and fixed investment data from China. So, um there's some more uh, in-depth um, reading to be done. Uh, let me just zoom in a little bit. If you want to do that, again, go to tradingeconomics.com. And if you click on the um, if you, on the first page, front page, uh, if you see week ahead should be the first um, uh, box that has been updated 25 hours ago. So have a read uh, more in-depth. Anyways, getting on to the technicals as well as some more fundamentals of what happened last week and my thoughts and biases um, for the week ahead. Uh, we're starting off on the dollar index and the dollar index is just a measure of dollar strength against uh, the major currencies and we had a sharp sell-off, right? And this is due to um, uh, 
uh, inflation, inflation woes, right? So say woes, but in fact, uh, the Federal Reserve do want inflation to come down, right? And ex inflation expectations and what inflation expectations um, uh, uh, when they uh, were released, basically it meant that the um, the expectation for interest rate hikes has kind of been pared back, right? And so, but um, the Wall Street managers, right, are pushing back on easing inflation hopes. So the job of a central bank is to try to get inflation back down to, you know, the 2% target. But, um, you know, Wall Street managers are basically saying that the um, we're going to be living with inflation for longer. So euphoria is sweeping every corner of Wall Street in the wake of the latest data that suggests inflation is peaking from a four decade high yet. Yeah. Big money managers are in no mood to celebrate, betting that the world will have to contend with elevated prices for years to come in, in a game changer for investing strategies of all stripes. So JP Morgan uh, Asset Management is clinging on to a record allocation in cash uh, in at least one of its strategies, while hedge fund solutions team at UBS Group AG is staying defensive. Man Group uh, Quants expect the great inflation trade to endure, with all signs suggesting price pressures will stay strong for a while yet. So I think you know the price in the dollar. I'm saying to the guys in the private group, um, I'm still long dollars, regardless of what's happening in the short term. I mean, if you actually just look at you know the year to date. You know, a pullback um, does not, you know, end the trend, for example. It does not end the trend at all. Um, I think the uh, price is just pulling back to bargain levels and I will be looking for, you know, buying opportunities, not necessarily on the dollar index, but on the... Um, uh, you know, dollar dollar crosses, right? Especially like, for example, the euro and the, uh, the pound. And so um, uh, to kind of back that up as well, um, you always want big money, uh, with you on your trade so the dollar is still king for strategies looking beyond the route and so the dollar has not stopped its worst week uh, since the early days of the covid pandemic but analysts think a long-running stampede for the greenback might not be over just yet so bloomberg dollar spot index slumped about 3.5 percent this week its biggest loss since march 2020 investors had been trimming bets on the dollar ahead of Thursday's US inflation data with a down with a slowdown in prices uh, leading uh, to it getting pummeled in the uh, index's worst one day performance since 2009 and what that does is that that psychologically gets you thinking that you know to most people to kind of short the dollar and again, this is not financial advice. This is just you know my thoughts. Um, but what I think is that the market is just pricing in really a fifty basis point um, hike rather than a seventy five basis point hike. Of course, you know there's going to be a pullback. The 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 scale of the pullback in terms of you know is it would it be a gradual one or would it be a sharp one? Obviously, it's been a sharp one, but it invokes emotion to for people who don't know any better to now start to want to get short. But but the smart money, if you know, we're right about this trade idea, still um, uh, are actually you know buying in you know with with uh, the dollar, buying the dollar as it starts to come down, regardless of how sharp it starts to come down. Um, and I do believe that the dollar is still the dog with the least fleas, right? In terms of when you look around. Um, on you know from, for example economic growth um, and uh, monetary policy uh, the, the 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 US is still the best regardless of you know looking at the uh, Europe and, and the pound for example so um, you know again just to continue on you know basically traders dial back bets on how much policy tightening they expect the Federal Reserve to implement and that's really the reason why right because they were pricing in a terminal rate of I think was it 5.25 percent but now they are um, maybe just scaling back but the market is just uh, pricing that in but um, and once it prices it in then I think the dollar will now be a buy um, and I still think it's a buy so a lot of traders say don't you know catch a falling knife but um, if you understand value um, or potential value then you can right you can catch falling knives all the time um, so for me I um, are my biases still to the upside? Will prices, you know, bounce from here? No idea. No idea. No one knows, you know, I mean, exactly where it's going to bounce and it might not, right? Again, we've got to look at price action, what it does there, the reaction, you know, and, and, and so on and so forth. But 
Um, there is a demand zone there and there is also uh, a couple of demand zones just underneath that level so for me I'm looking at you know price at all these levels uh, come the market open and seeing how price reacts to that um, what the market sentiment is etc and um, I'm looking at this as just buying the dollar for a you know bargain price regardless of what happened um, you know over the sell-off because eventually value will um, will come to the fore and uh, you know this is how you know traders get caught going the wrong side right there's a lot of traders going long for example lots of stop losses below levels um, you know big institutional stop losses this was known as a bit bit of um, a short squeeze um, you know the pain trade where traders are now you know um, in a bit of pain because they've been going long not trading with any stop losses and now they're in a bit of pain but eventually um, they'll get out of their trades or just add in and then um, I think that the dollar for me is still a buy um, in over the over the medium to long term at least for the rest of this year unless um, you know data comes out not supporting that narrative but as long as the, the data supports the narrative of a strong dollar or a decent dollar then I will be continue to be a buyer of the dollar anyways um, so that's the dollar index let's move on to um, the uh, dollar yen so again pullbacks all around uh, here we go. Yep, so big pullbacks on the dollar. Not surprising. Um, the next buys are around here. I think that the yen is 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 looking at being a buy at some point soon, going into 2023. But again, that's data dependent. Um, but if you are, you know, short on the dollar yen, then you will need, you know, you'd have to wait for pretty much a big pull back up to these areas here so just looking for either a move back up to here if you want to be short on the dollar um, or if you want to get long on the dollar then um, you know the 136 is looking quite nice and with you know the uh, yen GDP coming out uh, Japan, Japan Japanese um, GDP coming out if it disappoints then in fact this could be a decent buy in fact for the uh, for the dollar so um, so let's see what happens there uh, Dollar Swiss, Dollar Swiss again. Look at that massive sell-off. Um, I was saying uh, last week or week before that this technical area up here was was actually a, a, a really nice buy up at the top um, for the Swiss franc. If you believed, you know, as far as a short, um, that you believed that the Swiss franc was a buy against the dollar. But yeah, you can see if you uh, took that trade, that would have been very nice. Um, looking at where we are now, I think here is going to be the. Uh, you know, a decent buy technically, um, but again, yeah, I think there's uh, some levels just below that. Not really interested in trading this pair. Um, I think the Swiss National Bank is still um, quite hawkish, um, especially in a risk-off environment as well. You don't really want to, you know, buy to uh, risk-off um, currencies. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think where we are now, any pullbacks into these zones here, I think are decent for buying opportunities technically. Um, but it just really depends on um, where you think you know the value is. Um, but again, it's not really the best pay. I want to see you know bigger divergences in terms of uh, monetary policy and fundamentals. Dollar CAD. So again, every 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 pair against the dollar really is pulling back. So um, and again, just to give it perspective, look at where we were at the beginning of 2022. Yeah. And where we were, of course, you had to expect to pull back, right? Look at that, almost parabolic in terms. Of, you know, you know, we're just getting a getting a decent pullback, and uh, the markets are going to find uh, value somewhere. Again, a pullback into some decent demand zones. Demand there, demand there, and demand around here. Um, and so again, just looking for any kind of uh, long trades at those areas. If you're looking for short trades and buying the Canadian dollar against the US dollar, then you're looking at these areas um, right here. Um, moving on to the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, New Zealand dollar, um, you know, grinding higher. And we've come to quite an interesting um, area, I think in terms of a potential short trade to buy the US dollar. If risk remains more often on, then um, I think this is a decent area to look for any kind of uh, short trades. In fact, this whole zone would be uh, supply. And then you've got an area of supply here, hidden supply, and then you've got an area there. Um, 
But I think commodity currencies like the Australian dollar and the New Zealand dollar may benefit from a trade idea I discussed in the group regarding uh, China's zero COVID lift restrictions. And so if that starts to come to fruition, I do think that the New Zealand dollar will be a buy, but it's slightly too early to get involved, I think, in that trade yet or you know that I'm getting involved in that trade of course traders can you know get into um, any trades they want um, in terms of you know trade idea but um, I'm waiting for more evidence really to to come out but I think if the China trade um, COVID restriction idea does come to um, fruition then I think any pullbacks especially into that 59 area will be going to be a very nice zone um, if the uh, uh, dollar starts to find, you know, some um, some more uh, uh, some value as well as maybe potential more risk off sentiment, then I think this area here is going to be decent for a um, for a short trade. You also have obviously some uh, su obvious support and resistance uh, within that area there, and support and resistance is drawn as a zone, not necessarily just a, a line, right? So I think that area there is decent. You also have bit of uh, support and resistance right there so within that wide zone you've got these two areas to look for um, short trades and uh, pound dollar pound dollar and a pound really is just rallying based off of um, uh, dollar weakness and um, let's go to what was the uh, charting the uh, no, actually, it wasn't this one. It was uh, this is it. So the UK economy contracted by 0.2% in the quarter three, putting it on the brink of recession. Pretty much, you need two negative quarters of growth um, to be classified as a technical recession. Uh, the UK economy shrank by 0.2% in the last quarter, putting it on the brink of recession. The Office of National Statistics reports that the, that GDP fell in July September quarter, following a 0.2 rise in April, sorry in April to June. Uh, that's less bad than feared but still shows the UK economy is weakening as the cost of living crisis and rising interest rates hit the economy and uh, yeah so you know there were there were some reasons for that and you know the Queen's funeral added to September's GDP hit um, and further weakness is coming according to ING and a winter recession looks highly likely and um, and also as well from uh, the Guardian blog uh, UK lags behind other G7 countries so the UK fell behind other uh, major advanced economies in the last quarter so the UK is the only member of the G7 whose economy shrank by July September although Japan is yet to report its third quarter data in contrast Germany France kept to expand in the part despite the energy crisis while the US returned to growth so when you look at um, in, in comparison um, to you know what the uh, United Kingdom and you know when you're buying a currency one of the things you want to do is look towards you know how the economy is performing and the UK is obviously um, uh, not doing so well right so why would you buy you know the 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 the, the pound that's just my you know my thinking so it says we should remember that the uk's economy was pulled bound by the bank holiday for the queen state funeral which caused around half of the 0.6 percent drop in gdp during september but still pantheon um macros sam tombs says uk is a global outlier the only g7 country to have not seen gdp recover fully to its pre-covid uh fourth quarter 2019 um, peak right so uh, there are reasons to to not really for me anyway want to buy the uh, the pound and also as well if I go back to I think it was here a uh, chart in the, uh, the global UK uh, sorry chart in the global economy prospects darken for UK and the euro area so you've also got as well you got the um the budget as well so Jeremy Hunt um is releasing the uh, Chancellor is releasing the uh, the budget, and that's going to have a big effect on, you know, fiscal policy and how you know they try to um, help the economy fiscally. So um, that's probably going to be a market mover, but I don't think there's anything they can really do. To be fair, um, they got to try something, but um, it depends on how the market takes it. But I'm still personally a, a, a shorter of the uh, of the uh, UK and, and the pound. So for me, technically, uh, I think right here, 
supply. There was talks about it could run up to the 120s. So if it does run up to the 120s, 120, 50 uh, area, I do think actually this area is going to be very nice and a decent bargain. Long way to go. Not too sure whether the forecast is still forecasting um, 103s, but because of what happened obviously with inflation in the US, but I do think that there is a good few hundred more than a few hundred pips you know five to a thousand pip move to the downside the higher it goes so um yeah let's see what happens here so any short trades around here or here i think are very nice for um to buy the dollar against the pound and if you want to buy the pound against the dollar then you're really looking at this area here quite a wide zone of demand um uh, demand okay it's not changing all right that should be demand. Huh. What's going on there? Anyways, um, that's a demand zone, um, even though it's in red. So, um, but yeah, my bias is to the downside, so I'm looking for any kind of short trades in and around these zones um, coming next week. Uh, Euro dollar. Right, and the euro dollar, um, again, my bias is still to the short side, although we've obviously seen this massive, massive pullback, right? Um, sharp pullback, but I still think the dollar is a buy over Europe. Um, short term, obviously, it's a bit difficult to, to trade in terms of, um, you know, understanding the sentiment. And it's not to say that you don't understand the sentiment because the sentiment is against the dollar at the moment. But I do think... Um, you know, I'm looking for just opportunities to look for any short trades in these areas. Of course, this is not financial advice. If you do want to be a buyer of the, um, the, the, the euro, then you're really looking for a pullback into that demand zone there. Um, why is it not turning? I wonder why it's not going to demand. Supply, demand. All right, okay. It's a bit, um, it's a bit frustrating. But yeah, there's... Um, let me just turn this green. Will it turn green? Oh, okay. All right, so it's turning green then. Anyways, it's a demand zone there, right? You have to wait for a pullback, but you end up having to wait for at least a 200, nearly 300 pip pullback, you know, for in order for you to try and get long at that demand zone. Um, Aussie dollar. Yeah, Aussie dollar. And we've got, um, again, similar to um, a lot of the other currencies in terms of buying uh, the dollar you're going to have to oh, no, I'm not sure what's happening guys with my uh, my supply and demand zones I have to do it manually it looks like um, anyways these are where the supply zones are I don't even think my supply zone is working now um, I'm having a technical meltdown anyways uh, this is where the uh, supply zone is Let's see if I can draw on here now. Still can't draw on here. One second, guys. Right, I am back. There was something to do with my internet connection, I think. Don't know what was going on. Anyways, um, so any short trades, if you're looking to buy the US dollar, um, coming up, I think, around here. In fact, that extends up here. Um, again, I think I'd probably be a buyer of the Australian dollar if the COVID zero um, Chinese, you know, the Chinese um, reduce the COVID zero policy or end it, and I think that is going to be a really nice buy for the Australian dollar against the um, the US dollar. But um, until really there's a bit more evidence to support that trade idea, um, I think my bias is probably more to the uh, to the short side. But I'm not really interested in trading this pair um, until um, until I think the COVID zero um, starts to you know, have an impact. Uh, Aussie yen, and um, let's see what happens here, but I think we've got quite a wide demand zone, and demand zone has been touched several times, so for me, if I was gonna be a buyer, I would really want to be a buyer down at these, um, down at these lows right here. So um, any kind of pullback, right into here because it's been touched here been touched here for me this doesn't this becomes less of a bargain so i'd really wait for price to pull back into the 90 um the 90s and look for any kind of buy trades if you're looking to short the aussie 
yen, then your first area has to be uh, the supply zone right there, there, and there is where we are. Um, you do have actually a really quite a nice obvious area of support as well so uh, for those of you who know about potential stop hunting that's a decent area for a potential stop hunt as well um, so those are your options and then gold gold is uh, taken off this week um, again I've been saying this for the past few months you know the smart money um, the, the central banks have really been buying um, gold and buying gold and let's uh, show you one second it says one of the world's top gold buying central banks is far from sated sated i guess um uzbekistan is growing a share of bullion in 32 billion reserves and central banker says uzbekistan has reversed plans to buy debt and the world's second biggest buyer of gold among central banks last quarter believes there's hardly such thing uh, as as too much bullion right so you might be thinking well Uzbekistan you know they're, they're not the biggest uh, country in the world but ultimately um, if they're buying you know gold and they're starting to buy gold believe me and this is the I guess more the more of the developed nation right so developing sorry uh, gold bugs in the developing world right um, so the developed world, which is, you know, the, the UK, the US, Japan, Europe, if, you know, these guys are buying and increasing their their, their, their gold reserves, then imagine what the uh, developed um, banks are doing. And, you know, that's, um, you know, it makes all the sense in the world. And so um, really buying gold is just, you know, for if you're, you know, short dollars, I guess a, a way to kind of short dollars is to really kind of buy gold. And you're looking for really any pullbacks, especially if the gold um, dollar does start to kind of just weaken a bit and start to auction, then these areas here are going to be really, really nice for a potential, you know, buy on gold. If you believe in, you know, continued dollar strength up into, you know, the highs and beyond, which I actually don't anymore because of the uh, shift really in uh, the terminal rate on the dollar. Um, then you can obviously look for short trades here if you believe that the dollar is still going to strengthen and there is an argument to, you know for that to happen um you know to the short side but i think for me going into 2023 my bias now is going to be on buying um the obviously now but it's been on that that way for, for a while but um it's buying uh, more gold on pullbacks i think so uh, so yeah that's really where we are so hope you enjoyed the uh, technical analysis again don't forget trading 180 membership opens up on monday the 28th of november for um, a few days and it's going to be the last one this year also as well um if you want to if you want me to release the forecasting forex trends this year that lasts for months webinar you know one in four people have got to like this video and i've got to have a thousand views so i need to get 250 likes in a thousand views and if you can do that i will release it asap it will go on as soon as i see that we've got uh, 25 percent. so guys have a great week and i will speak to you all soon